Time to eat and get ready for my day. It's hard to do much if you're not fed. This one, see those holes? That one's got a pretty good hole in it. Yep. Something else is hungry today. Yep. So if you're following along with me on this gardening journey, you know that uh, We've been doing a lot of planting and plants are up and hopefully your plants are up as well. Uh, this morning I ate breakfast, I was hungry, but as you can see, there are other things that are hungry as well. And we need to slow down their, uh, their ability to feed on our plants a little bit. Let's, let's treat our plants organically for some pests. So uh, this is our neem oil. And as you can see, this is 100% uh, unrefined virgin organic neem oil and I found this on Amazon and pretty reasonable when I bought it uh, it comes from a seed of the neem oil tree and as you can see the, the the good stuff is really thick down in the bottom so we need to we need to make sure that that gets incorporated into the whole product Did you know that neem oil is 100% safe around pets wildlife and um, livestock it won't even harm bees butterflies or um, pollinators so it's a safe anti-insect protection for your plants organically. So I've just got this little sprayer that we're gonna use to, uh, to treat our plants with. And it's a half gallon sprayer, so it's not very big. I won't need much more than that to treat my gardens, but we'll mix our um, neem oil in this little sprayer. Neem oil is effective against over 200 types of insects. Aphids, white flies, thrips, caterpillars, cutworms, um, I think it's um, mealybugs. Um, yeah, neem oil is an extremely affected um, insecticide to use in the garden. It's biodegradable. So what we're doing to uh, warm up our neem oil, it doesn't need to be real warm. I'm just using our tap water and uh, putting this neem into the uh, warm water and I'm gonna let it sit for a while so that it, um, it loosens up and we can incorporate all those beneficial products back into the full substrate. Not only in the gardens, but neem oil is effective for indoor plants and growing in the greenhouse. It's effective in the lawn. Neem oil protects against nematodes, grubs, but will not harm your earthworms like Dichonomous Earth will. So the neem oil has been in this water for about two minutes and you can see already that uh, that clump of, of large material at the bottom is nearly ready to, uh, to be incorporated. I'll just let it sit for a little longer. Neem oil works as an antifungicide and also an antibactericide. It's, it works against powdery mildew, uh, leaf rot, uh, tip burn. It's really an incredible, incredible product. If you don't have a, some neem oil for your gardens to protect against these sort of things, you need to get some. Neem oil is also effective on fruit trees and ornamentals. So for this preparation, the ratio is gonna be one tablespoon of neem oil to one teaspoon of dishwashing soap per gallon of water.
Since we're using a half gallon sprayer, we're gonna use a half a tablespoon of neem oil and a half a teaspoon of Dawn dishwashing soap. Okay, let's mix it up. First, I'm gonna put in um, my neem oil. And you can see it's fully emulsified now. Give it a good shake. Let's see here. So 15 milliliters is one tablespoon. Put in a half a tablespoon of neem oil, half a teaspoon of dishwashing soap. Neem oil will even help with mosquitoes. You remember that warm water that we re-emulsified our neem oil with? I'm gonna use that same water to mix up my, uh, <clears throat> my neem oil spray for my garden. It's gonna help uh, keep the neem oil emulsified as we spray. I'm just gonna take my cup and uh, rinse it out with um, the warm water. And then y'all, we just pour water into our sprayer to the half gallon mark. And there we go. Get ready, bugs, because here I come. Neem oil can be used all the way up until harvest, but will need to be reapplied after rain. As you're spraying, make sure to get the undersides of the leaves as well as the tops. Around the base of the plants as well. That application of neem oil, I was able to treat all of my garden beds, my tomatoes, my peppers, my squash. I was also able to treat the yard garden and uh, really glad I had enough in a half gallon to be able to do all that. If you don't have neem oil, get some and protect your garden against the hungry critters that are there to, uh, to slow down your harvest. Are you hungry too? You can't eat the grass, right? But he sure better mow it. Um, so thankful we got a riding mower. Our neighbor, I have the most terrific neighbor of all time, y'all. He uh, tilled up a huge plot of ground for us to do like a community garden here within our little community, which is just me and his house. But uh, he loaned me this tiller and that, has, that tiller has made a huge difference in what we were able to do this year. Uh, but he also uh, helped get my riding lawnmower back working. Part of the reason we turned over as much ground as we did, oh boy. And tearing up Jack down there in my garden. Uh, we didn't have a lawnmower. I didn't think that this lawnmower was gonna come back from the dead. And my neighbor was really good with small engines. And he said, bring that mower over here to get a chance. I'll see if we can't get it running. And you can see the results of that endeavor. Uh, it's really awesome to have 
good name. If you don't know David the Goods channel, uh, you might need to get out from under the rock you're living in and go and check that out. Um, anyway, he was talking about a, uh, a compu compost brew, a compost tea brew that he did. And uh, quite by accident earlier in the year, I made this. It's just some yard clippings and grass and compost that I threw in this tub and then uh, put my plants or let the rain fill it up. And uh, he said this is supposed to be really good for your plants. And uh, I'm glad I've got some. I need to stir it a little bit. But yeah, this is a cold, cold brew uh, compost vat. I think what he, his recommendation for me was to add some manure and some urine to this. And so um, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go get some rabbit manure and put in this compost so it's got some, some nitrogen and, and, you know, the bacteria have a little stinky to stink up. But uh, I'm glad that I stumbled into that compost. Uh, I'll show you my compost pile. And um, y'all, here is the tomato that I, I didn't want to grow. And I have not protected this plant at all from frost or anything. I just, uh, when I was up potting seedlings, uh, this is one of the ones that didn't make the cut. And so I threw it into this, what I, I've got a worm composter that I only put, I only put food scraps in that, that bucket. I did, I don't need more. But then the rest of the compost is just yard waste, which I'm careful about what kind of yard waste I put in here. Nothing with seed heads or seed pods. But if it doesn't have a seed head or a seed pot on it, I'll throw it in here. Um, and you can see there's lots of food scrap. But anyway, this tomato is in essentially my worm casting bucket. Um, and you can look at the lush green growth. This is the best looking tomato plant I have on the entire place. And it's one that I tried to throw away. 